All right guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm talking to one of my most loyal YouTube subscribers and specifically talking about questions of how to study, especially for somebody that's so early into their medical journey, but I know some of those tips will help you out, so stay tuned. Let's get into it. All right guys, welcome to another episode of the TMJ Show. Today we have Abed. Abed, how are you doing, boss? I'm doing great, yeah. Cool. So tell me how we can help you. What's going on? Oh uh, man, I was kind of struggling in undergrad lately mm -hmm. and man, my grades are are decent average and I don't know, I'm a freshman right now currently and okay. I'm going to a community college currently. So I'm kind of getting adjusted to school and university. So sure. kind of need some advice and I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So struggling in your kind of first year of school, how do you do better? Especially when you're in community college, is that fair? Yeah, because I from high school I kind of struggled a lot, mm -hmm. and then I had to go come to college for that ship, you know, because I didn't want to go to university and like, you know, I mean, fail, you know what I mean? Sure. So, what are your, what are you finding to be the hardest part about studying? Oh man, getting finding the most retention because I'm trying to study and sometimes I don't even remember anything. Mm -hmm. When I do practice questions, I kind of struggle with them, especially taking tests. I don't do so good, you know? Okay. So how are you currently focusing on retention? What's your, what's your method? All right. My method right now is kind of, well, I've been reviewing the PowerPoint slides every day mm -hmm. and I just go over them with the notes he kind of does with it too. And that's why, and then I kind of do practice questions and he do a study guide too. So what's your, what's your current breakdown of how much time you're spending doing PowerPoints and the notes and doing practice questions? Yeah. So PowerPoints, uh, I take like two or three hours to read them mm -hmm. with my notes. For personally, I'm a really slow reader. So it takes me a while to kind of understand and kind of get, adjust the questions, like to understand the PowerPoints. Sure. And like practice questions, I... For me, I'm a slow reader, so it takes a while to me, but I try to kind of get the idea just of it to do it quickly as possible. Like you said, kind of mm -hmm. like you now you said, give yourself 10 to 20 seconds to kind of yeah. answer that, which was really helpful because I would kind of understand where I'm, what lecture points I'm making mistakes on. So I would go back to that as soon as possible, you know? Sure. Um, so are, it looks like you're kind of reading the PowerPoint slides and then using whatever notes you took during class and hoping that that kind of serves as your long-term retention that you're testing yourself. Is that fair? Yeah. Yeah, cool. basically. Yeah. So how effective, and this is a good trick to test yourself if you're actually like finding utility out of a method, how effective, like let's say you're going to review your PowerPoints for X amount of hours and then ask you questions on it two to three hours later, how much do you think you would retain? I'll be honest with you, man, probably like 50, 40% bro. Cool. Yeah, so for something that you reviewed that day to only remember half means that that time could probably be spent, you know, elsewhere, um, doing yeah. a different, a different style. Um, and it may, it may just be a combination where you jump into those practice questions quicker. If that gives you the biggest bang for your buck, you know, so the same approach where you're like, well, I'm going to spend two hours and then I'm going to get the most benefit after doing practice questions. But really that two hours really didn't give me much value. Maybe I need to shift it to where I spend less points reviewing the PowerPoint and just get into the quizzing. Cause if I get into the quizzing, I know exactly what I know and don't know. And then I can quickly self correct myself. Um, so that's your beauty. You don't need to spend more hours studying. You just need to change how you use those hours. Yeah. Cause I struggled time mm -hmm. management too. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, a good way to flip it on its a shoulder, right, is that your ultimate goal is to prepare for the exam. And that mm -hmm. means your ultimate goal is that there's going to be 100 plus things that you need to know for the test. So as you get closer to test day, that list should get smaller and smaller, right? Reading the PowerPoint doesn't necessarily make that list go smaller. It just reminds you of what's on that list. But again, you want to make that list as small as possible. You know, if, if the PowerPoints aren't working for you, then like I said, you know, as you're going to test day, what, what class are you taking right now? Right now, do I was seeking bio. Okay. Yeah. So let's use bio as an example. Yeah. You know, you're going to a bio exam. You have 150 topics that you learned over multiple lectures that you need to learn, right? So the PowerPoint again only reminds you of what's on that list. When you do practice questions, you're like, oh shoot, out of this 150, like this I get right even after like only listening to it in class once. These topics I keep missing. So that's where I need to review. 
Um, so if you start with a back end mindset of saying like, here's what I need to know. If I knew everything on this list, then I'm golden for the exam. If I knew it for long-term retention, like if I could explain it a week later to somebody else who's not in this class, that's your ultimate test. If you just pretend somebody is in front of you that doesn't know, you know, um, essentially anything about that topic in bio and feel like you can comfortably explain it, that's the ultimate level you want to get to, right? So the way we go is we start with that list and saying, okay, like, what do I need to know? You test yourself and remind you, basically assess of like, how well do you know various things on that list? You know, maybe you really know physiology on a certain topic, but you don't on a different organ system, right? That's just an example. When you look at that list now, you're like, okay, now when I need to review, instead of spending that two times, two hours reading the PowerPoint in general, I'm going to focus more specifically on those topics that give me trouble. I'm going to read it, that specific topic, and then I'm going to see, can I explain it? Can I write it down from memory in a way where I could teach it to somebody else? Right. Cause if you can do that, then ideally that long-term retention lasts for several days to weeks and then going into test day. Eventually what you'll find over time is as soon as you go, here's my list. I took some practice exams. I sucked at this. Now I'm going to focus on these. Um, and now when I do my two hours of review, I'm focused specifically on these topics. And if I can teach it to somebody else, I'm going to knock it off as something I've mastered over time. That list is going to get smaller and smaller of things that are going to trip you up for the exam date. Um, and that's how you build long-term retention. So most people in your column of falling in this boat is you're starting with all the information they're giving you being the PowerPoints. And then you're wondering why you're not able to remember the information, but they're only testing you on a certain amount of it, right? So for you to get the biggest bang for your buck and go from the C's to the B's to the A's is you have to be aware of everything that's testable, meaning create a list, look at your outlines on your PowerPoints, your syllabus, whatever, of what they actually care about. And then ask yourself going to test day, these are all the things I need to master. Um, and sort them into the way where like, this is the thing that's gonna trip me up the most because I've already missed practice questions on it. I don't really understand it when they talked about it in class. Those are the things you need to review first. So instead of just going, I'm gonna pull up lecture one and review all the slides for lecture one, saying here are the topics that are gonna trip me up. I'm gonna focus on the first 10 on this list, right? Because if I feel more comfortable there, then I'm gonna jump up to the next one. It makes so much sense. It's so much easier instead of just doing that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you think about it, right, like you're studying for the test for you, right? Like the same test is given to you and your classmate, but everyone thinks that they need to study the same way. But you may miss a totally different question than your peers. So why not yeah. study in a way that's designed for you to focus on the things that are going to trip you up? Yeah. Right. So somebody could say something and instantaneously you can be like, that makes perfect sense. I, I'm going to remember that forever. Somebody else will listen to that. Holy crap. Like that made no sense at all. Right. So that's the whole difference is that we, after, even after two different forms of retention of how quickly you pick something up, we still focus on every bit of information as if they're equally important, but they're not equally important for you. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, that's true. Cause personally, I just review all the PowerPoint slides. So. Yeah. I mean, it, it's not wrong to do it, to get an idea of what's going to be on the test. But like I said, if you study for two hours and you realize this PowerPoint review method didn't really give me much value, then you may be able to speed it up into an hour and saying, let me just identify everything that needs to be known on this PowerPoint created on a list. And instead now use that extra hour that I saved to go ahead and start testing myself. Because then when I test myself, I can now create a, I can now look at this list and say, okay, I really don't understand these topics. So now when it gets closer to test day, I can focus on those first. Yeah, that's so much easier. I didn't think about that. Yeah. All right, guys, hopefully you guys are enjoying this conversation with Abed and specifically some of the techniques that we talked about, how, how he can flip his study schedule around. Huh? Just like him, hopefully you guys are having some aha moments of how you can use this in your own life. If you are finding this interview helpful, then go ahead and help this video and this episode out by hitting that thumbs up button down below. Did you have any other questions? Yeah, I had a quick question. So this is a general, Brian. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about people taking a pre most prereqs at a community college? Sure. Uh, kind of. Yeah. So you're not going to be the first person who gets into medical school because they did community college. You're not going to be the last one. Right. So the, the, the kind of the back and forth of doing pre-med uh, recs at a community college, it's kind of a toss up, you know, ideally you can do some of them at a university. So like, you know, if you're, you know, ideally if you had a community college for two years and there may still be classes that are left in your pre-med requirement, things like OCHEM, or higher level physics, et cetera, that you can still take out of four-year university when you eventually transfer. 
Um, and that just helps you avoid two things. One, you know, it honestly doesn't really matter as long as you do well on those pre-med classes. That's that's what matters, right? Yeah, but uh, but you may have somebody who's like, well, is the quality or the caliber of this class as equal at a community college versus a four-year university? You can nip that in the butt if you can ultimately do well on one of those higher-end pre-med courses. OCHEM being a great example, um, physics being a great example. I mean, it, it just depends on like what your track is and how many you're planning on doing. Um, but you, I, sh I wouldn't slow down what pre-med classes you're taking now just so you can take them out of four-year university. Um, the plan is to do well as best as you can at a community college, whatever classes are left, do well at a four-year university. And even the classes that are not pre-med requirements do well at a four-year university. Is that way you can show a med school, like I know how to study, you know, my grades suffered here and I've done and improved, I've learned. Uh, but even when I went to a harder, like more four-year uh, typical kind of curriculum, I was still able to do well. So they won't be able to question whether or not you're like suitable for a med school education. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yes. Yeah. So don't use being at a community college as like a an obstacle you have to overcome. It's an opportunity for you to get better at studying. And then when you get to that for your university, you wanna be able to use those same strategies to say, okay, I can still study. You know, material mm -hmm. isn't necessarily harder, or easier test may be, depending on where you go. Um, but as long as your retention is good for what you learn, you can take that to wherever you go to school. Yeah, my retention is not that good. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, that's why you work at it, right? So the yeah. beauty of being this early into like wanting to be a physician or want to be on the medical journey is like, you know, your first year really should be like, how the hell do I study? And you may learn a hundred and different one ways that don't work for you. That's perfect. Um, but as you start to take a quiz, Every time you do well or you do poorly saying, why did that go poorly? And don't just say my retention is bad, but saying like, how did I actually try to retain this? And did it actually work ultimately? Do I actually remember it? And if not, then you need to change that form of retention that you're trying. Or if it worked really well, you're like, oh, maybe my test strategies didn't work. Like I made too many guesses. I tried to change how, you know, I was answering these questions. That's a different thing that you need to work on. But every yeah. test should be a way for you to fix how you study. So that way, next test you go in and be like, okay, this is not going to be a problem anymore. Yeah. That makes sense, you know? <laughs> yeah. But hopefully that helps, man. I mean, you're early on, so I wouldn't stress yourself out about, you know, things that always go on your way. That's that's how it's always going to be. So Yeah, because like whenever I use a power police, man, I'm trying like a new strategy kind of. Mm -hmm. Because I can't really figure out what type of learner I'm at too. Yeah. Because... Personally, I mean, and I struggle a lot in high school. I barely studied in high school. Like, I was one of those kids, you know? Yeah, I mean, but, everyone has like their own own style of like, and their own path, right? So yeah, yeah. some of us did really well and then college really like woke us up. Some people did yeah. really well in college and then they call me on these and they said, okay, I don't know how to study in med school. And like, that's completely normal. Um, yeah. But in terms of like finding what type of learner you are, if you're finding that quizzing yourself is helping, you know, I would do that more. Um, and then whether you decide to learn long-term through drawing things out, watching videos on that topic, listening to somebody talk about it, reading something tends to not be the case for most people. There are obviously a few people that can read something and saying like, this is the best way to learn for me. Um, but most people, yeah, most people don't. So I would not make that your first opportunity. So create a list of things you need to know. And then ask yourself, like, how are you going to knock that list off because you get a test date? Is it going to be watching a bunch of YouTube videos on that topic? Is it going to, you know, I wouldn't rewatch your lectures, but um, yeah, yeah. essentially like what high yield method do you want to use? Do you want to quiz yourself? Do you want to draw it out yourself? Do you want to practice teaching somebody? Those are all different forms of learners that we have and multiple versions of those may still apply to you. Um, but as long as your focus is how much, how can I spend the most amount of time doing that? then test day becomes a lot easier. Yeah, I think that's a great approach. I didn't, yeah. I mean, I did it the other way. <laughs> that's, I mean, most people do, so it's not, uh, it's, it's not uh, surprising, but I mean, as you do more and more exams, like I have uh, over my X amount of years now in school, you realize that that's not, it's not time efficient, nor is it effective. Yeah. I had one last question. Actually. Sure. Go for it. Uh, so, how would you advise building your like CV, like resume during COVID, especially COVID, like shadowing, you know, yeah. people are allowing it, you know, kind of. Sure. Know. Um, that's a good question. So, you know, COVID's not going to be here forever. Um, so 
if you're struggling getting shadowing, I would not necessarily change your approach. I would just change your frequency of who you ask and and questions over time. And, you know, like create a database. Like if you're reaching out to people and they're saying, you know, not because of COVID right now, that doesn't mean they'll say no in the future. So just create like an Excel sheet of all the people you've emailed, keep emails, find more emails and send those out. And then as things get a little bit more lax in terms of, you know, restrictions and things of that sort, you can reach out to those people in the future. You're early on at the moment that no one's going to ask you how many shadowing, shadowing, shadowing hours, excuse me, that you did during your first year of school. How many shadowing hours did you do your second year? No one really cares about hours. The most important part is like, do you actually know if this is for you, right? So if it takes until your end of your sophomore year for you to get some experience in a clinic um, or an OR, um, then that's fine. Um, but other options you have is that, you know, from what I've seen through social media, through YouTube, is that there are, you know, channels aside from mine um, that do things like e-shadowings. Uh, I'll link down the pre-med headquarters um, or the med school headquarters, excuse me, um, channel, which is fantastic. They do interviews like this too, um, particularly for people who are applying to medical school. Um, but they do e-shadowings. Uh, I'm not sure if it's free or paid. I believe it's free, um, but I'll link it down below. So they'll have physicians join on Zoom call and then you can just watch in. Um, but again, the goal of shadowing is not to put it on your CV. Um, we do it just because we want to like tell the app application board that we know we want to do this. But the, the goal of shadowing is for you to know that you want to do this because then it shows up on your personal statement. It shows up on other experiences you choose. Um, so I would just, I mean, even if it's, if it's weird as like doing those e-shadowings and just like getting on a zoom call and watching somebody on their daily life, um, or, you know, um, whether it may be watching YouTube videos on the life of X, you know, whatever specialty you may think you may be remotely interested in, watch those. Um, and I'll give you an idea of who you want to reach out to, but in the background, don't stop reaching out because eventually people's regulations from COVID and things of that sort will go down. Um, and they're going to reintroduce students following them in their clinics in the hospital. And so you just want to be able to constantly follow up. Yeah. I mean, that's a good idea. I'm going to start doing that with that yeah. Excel method right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. And it's pretty noble. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, uh, I wish you the best of luck. I always appreciate all the loves in the comments, um, but I'll link, uh, I bet I'll link your social media stuff down below. Um, yeah. we wish you the best of luck. Okay. Yeah. You too. How's the res residency going for you, bro? Residency's good. Um, halfway, halfway there, a year's left until I'm done. So, um, it's good. good and what was that? Keep going. I, and that's, that's, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. But, uh, I will keep trucking along just like you are. All right, man. Thank you, man. Of course. Thank Good you. talking to you. Talk to you later. You I hope you guys enjoyed this interview on a bunch of topics that we talked about, all about how to flip your study method on its head to make it more effective and personal to you. Because That's really what we're all about here at the MD Journey, but also things about how to make yourself stand apart on your pre-med journey, especially when things aren't going your way, or if you feel like you're already kind of behind the eight ball and things like community college or in the situation like he is in COVID like we all are. But hopefully you guys found this episode helpful. If you did, go ahead and again, drop your comments and questions down below. And also all the things that we talked about on this episode episode, including the med school headquarters, YouTube channel, Instagram, I'll link those down below. Show those guys some love because they're doing some pretty amazing things. And if you're listening to this episode and you're pretty early into your medical journey, somewhere on your pre-med journey, then check out the pre-med journey that we have on Amazon. You can check it out for 99 cents. It's a full blueprint of essentially everything I did and would want to do if I was in your shoes applying to medical school. But with that being said, guys, thank you so much for always being a part of my journey. Hopefully I've been a little help to you guys on yours. Now, if you did enjoy this video, then check out this video and a full tutorial on how to use Anki like a pro, as well as this video to talk about how to improve your grades with one simple step. Hopefully you guys enjoy these videos and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.